it is that time of the week again. Time for hashtag Rise and Cues, where we answer your questions. All right, first question is kind of aimed at soccer, so I'll <laughs> read it. Can Trump's RNC speech turn the tide to Trump's advantage, sort of the way Lincoln's Gettysburg Address pivoted the 1864 elections? Both were underdogs coming to the election after a failed response to a national crisis, Lincoln in the Civil War, and Trump with the pandemic. Mm, wow, that is quite an analogy. That's a take uh, there. That's, that's a, a real take. That's certainly a take there, my friend. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to let you take me down that road. You're not going to go full Trump as Lincoln and this is his Gettysburg <laughs> moment? No? As much as he, Trump would love for me to do <laughs> like so, a, I am not going to be. You would be in the next Trump ad if you that's said true. that. That's true. Absolutely. <laughs> with that speech, with the convention, do I think it's going to be a ma major turnaround? No. If he sticks to the themes that they talked about in the convention and in the speech and lean more into them, yes, he has a chance at winning the election. That's, that's my take there. I, the speech was a mixed bag. It was like 70 minutes long. There was some Trojan horse socialism stuff. There were some great critiques of Joe Biden and globalism that were in there. So which Trump are we gonna get? You genuinely don't know, given the, given the day. And this is where the lack of the rallies kills because yeah. you can even watch during those addresses amongst those Trump supporters, when he talked about NAFTA, people were like cheering. All about it. When he's talking about China, people cheering. The Trojan horse stuff, People were like, ah, ha, ha. You know, it's like a very tepid laughter. So if he had the rallies, I think he'd be much more in tune with what the base wants or what was really connecting and what isn't. But with the lack of that, the establishment's fully in control. You never know which Trump you're going to get. 66 days till, I guess when this airs, 64 days till election day. Who knows? Yeah. And I also think, like we've been saying for a long time, events are going to control. Yeah. What happens right. to like outside of the control of Trump or Biden, they're both placing bets on what the country is gonna look like in November. And I think that is gonna control much more so than, you know, last night's address, That's right. certainly. Although I agree with you, I think he may well get a couple point bump out of this convention. Mm. All right, next question. Okay, number two, how do you see the movement for a people's party? One of the biggest challenges I see in media coverage, your program seems like the only one that's likely to give proper credit. Well, even TYT seems to be towing the line lately, not going down that road there. Uh, Brant, but what do you think, Crystal? Um, I, first of all, they have a lot of great speakers lined up at the People's Party convention. Um, the folks who are behind this, they've been, this isn't a new effort. They've been working to organize for years. I think there's actually a lot of energy on the left around, they're you know, sick and tired of having these two bad choices and really want yes. some, a different direction to go in. Um, I personally believe that the efforts within the party are more likely, and hijacking the Democratic Party are more likely to be successful. But I support the idea of like, yeah, if you get out there and you create something mm -hmm. new, then you put you have a, a vehicle to put pressure on the Democratic Party as well. So of course the media is not going to cover it, um, but most of the people who you want to reach in these early stages are in more independent media spaces anyway, and they've got enough marquee speakers that I think at least some people are going to pay attention. Yeah, we'll see. As long as it's a, a vehicle through which they're trying to force change in one party, I think it's fine. I just, you know, people here know our thoughts on how you actually get something done in D.C., so we'll see. All right, yes. last question. Which phrase do you guys hate more, Trojan horse <laughs> or soul of the nation? I can't tell which I detest more after hearing both a zillion times in the last two years. Oof. That's Ooh. a tough one. I'm gonna uh, go I hate them with, both equally. I'm, I'm going to go with soul of the nation only because I find the Trojan horse thing sort of hilarious. Mm -hmm. That I'm just like, okay, guys, really? And we covered how Bernie was like, I, <sighs> I wish, wish. Yeah. I wish he was a Trojan horse for socialism, right? Which is how I feel about it. Is I always, it always just cracks me up when the Trump people come here and he's like, Biden is Trojan horse for socialism. So I guess it irritates me less than the like hokey soul of the nation. Yeah, thing. I completely agree. I am. I, look, I hate them both. They're both so cringe, <laughs> and I, I, I want to banish them all from politics. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll have more content for you here later.